Howdy peeps and welcome back to what is probably part 12 or maybe 13 of the Spitfire build series. Um, last time we got the underside painted using a black basing technique, a modelling technique. This time we're going to start on painting the top side. So the fuse larger wings, first of all in the grey which I think is an ocean grey, yeah it is and then we'll put the dark green over the top of that and then we can look at how we're going to post fade that to achieve a more worn and weathered look to the paint so let's have a look see where we were the astute among you will notice the bits of masking tape sticking out under the tail let me just move this out of the way first don't want to go accidentally spraying my little mozzie and what I've done, as I keep headbutting the camera, do apologise, is I just masked off the delineations for where the grey and green are, partly. I'll just finish that now. This isn't a, uh, a delicate or subtle technique. Good habit to get into. Always slightly detack the tape so it doesn't lift any paint underneath it, he says, hoping none of it does. If it does, we can show you how to fix it. And in this case, as we're not trying with these parts, trying to mask up to a tight line or anything spectacular, this is just to prevent overspray rather than anything else. We're just popping it on just to protect the paintwork underneath. And we'll pop a little bit on the front as well, for just in case. Again, this is another area of the hobby where saving money on buying cheap tape is not necessarily a good idea. Stick with either the Tamiya or if you can get it the, uh, well you can get it quite easily from places like Hobbycraft or Amazon or any art supply shop or craft supply shop I should say not art um, is the washi tape which is a very similar product but it doesn't have quite as good an edge on it and now that hasn't actually covered so just bend that back a bit so it does cover there we are now we'll get the cutting mat out of the way because we don't want to spray that grey Quick look, see. Yep, the compressor seems to be set around about right. I had, I was having a few issues when I was spraying the uh, mosquito the other day, and then I realised I had the air compressor set at like 10 psi, and I was trying to spray primer through it. Didn't really work too well, <laughs> as you can imagine. So again, I'm just using the Model Air Ocean Grey straight into the airbrush. I have already checked its sprays. That should be enough. Eight or nine drops should cover that. Maybe a couple more, but we can always add more paint. Now because we're not looking at doing any special spectacular techniques here, we are just trying to paint it. Just check we've got paint coming through and then There's not, there's not the need to mask the leading edges on this either because uh, they're going to be painted white at a later point. There goes the little model T. And again, we don't have to build up the colour totally uniformly. A few little lighter and darker patches don't hurt. Simply because, as long as you've got the main colour there and it's 
still looks grey. It's where it's weathering its tonal variation. When you, when you look at the model and it looks like a toy, you know, it looks like a die-cast toy. The usual reason for that is that the paint is all extremely uniform, all over. And um, if you can avoid that, you uh, end up with better results. No, don't spray the bottom of the horizontal stabs. I nearly did. And judging by the way this is spraying, I may well have the air pressure set a little too low, but I know the green needs a... Well, it's not that it needs a lower air pressure, it's for some reason the green from this set is a bit more front of spider webbing coming out far quicker than the grey does. Whether it just needs a damn good shake and stir up, I'm not sure, but that could well be the matter. Yeah, I think judging by the way the airbrush sounds, you can hear it's kind of struggling to spray. Um, that is, you know, paint slightly too thick. Or, in this case, air pressure slightly too low. I hope we're nearly there, so we'll just leave it. So as we haven't uh, lean over, get the compressor and drop the pressure for the green. And it's not like painting a Spitfire grey takes a huge amount of time. You chip the bit all around the nose. All the cockpit, the leading edge of the rudder. And the wings. And empty the rest of the paint out of the airbrush. I'll just uh, clean the needle off first. Because there's a bit of, bit of build up on there. It does tend to happen with the model air paints as you will get tip dry and build up the paint on the needle. It can be a hassle but it's not normally too bad. Especially this time of year when it's cold and wet. And not particularly pleasant out. Uh, generally in the more summer months when the uh, paint starts actually drying in the in the colour cup the have the problems. I had that one day last year I was trying to prime something or prime it, paint it, I can't remember what it was. Can't even remember which model it was. All I can remember is the paint was actually drying inside the colour cup. Which made life a bit awkward to say the least. So just giving the airbrush a quick flush through, a bit of water, and that's clear, a bit of airbrush cleaner, just a little bit. We don't need a full strip down and clean every time we use it, certainly not just for colour changes, otherwise you'd be here all day. 
make sure we get out of the nozzle. And as you can hear, that's spraying a whole lot easier. So we'll just clear that out. I'll get through a couple more drops of water, just water, water, just to make sure we've not got any cleaner left in there which could react with the paint. Now here's where I come to something that for me is a personal taste thing. I'm not a huge fan of hard edge camo on planes. I know rear in you know, real life they were painted hard edge with the rubber mats. I just don't like the look on the model to be honest. So what I do is I freehand the camo. I might even drop the air pressure a little more for this green. Yeah, I'm going to. Why do you say that? Oh, only a little. I'll do. I think I managed to do it without completely smacking the camera, which is a result. Now, normally, obviously, yes, I would wait a little longer for the paint to dry before I started painting. Um, but hey ho, here we go. Now, just looking at the diagram to see roughly where the camo goes, and then we start spraying. Right. And for this, I will take the needle cap off. Obviously, at this point, you need to be careful not to smack the airbrush into everything, anything, or you will damage the needle. Start with an outline and then we build up the green inside the outline. already have a little tip dry sorted and the next section of green starts about there comes in goes down that line then up across like so way up we're going on the body of the plane now going up to the back of the cockpit and then again just start filling in actually go at the front it goes from the voice of random scraping noises is the airbrush cable along the edge of the paper on the top of the bench if you're wondering what that was as you were hearing it let's pull the car pull the uh, hose out of the way not cable oh, hang on uh, Clean the needle off again. So I'm doing this, this is just practice. There's no real 
skill involved, it's just steady hand, getting to know your paint, getting to know your airbrush. Knowing your tools is one of the most important things, if I think. Um, if you know how a tool is going to react, if you know how a paint is going to react, it makes your life a lot easier. So you and does it come on to the top of the wing? It does just at the back. Right. down from there to about there. Right. You can see here just how little I am actually pu pulling the airbrush needle back. Just to get enough paint out to do the job I want it to do, rather than low paint everywhere. So we only have one of that hill. So inside. So you're having trouble the actual oh, airbrush cup hitting the propeller. Again we just trace a rough line. In my book the camo pattern doesn't have to be exactly what it would have been. And we come down and around and up in between those. Something like that. We'll take that corner out. We'll do it like that. Let's give that a quick clean off again. Simple enough to do. Now you might be able to see there while I've held the airbrush in the same place for a little too long. We've got a bit of a build up of paint there. We we'll just leave it to dry. It might, you know, it might need sanding back a little. We might be able to just get away with leaving it. Depends how it dries. The model there tends to be fairly forgiving. the wings. Now the sides of the fuselage 
There's another band coming over around about here. And it's just in front of the tile. And there's another splat on the tile as well. So it will just Done filled in, and it's going to be that tail plane that goes thing is. Uh, I'm talking to myself as I go through this. Is the picture I'm looking at of the plane is the opposite way around to the plane, so I'm having to kind of make things figure things out and make sure I get it the right way, the right way around. So we've all done that thing where you start masking a camo, normally a splinter cam in my case, and um, you get like halfway through it before you realise you've been masking off the wrong colour. Uh, yes, I've done that more than once. Uh, and simply because of the more haphazard approach I've been taking with the green and also because of the way this paint sprays it's not necessarily going to be the best coat but what I can do is go over it again give it another little light coat that's not a problem just uh, Fill up the cover if if it if it looks patchy. Um, let's just uh, plug this light in, shall we? Might be able to see a bit better then. If I can find the right lead and plug. Uh, This is one of those cases where it's actually showing up better on camera than it is to my eyes. So let's have a look, see where might we need to have a little more. As I said, the painting like this, it's just a case of practice. Um, as I've, well, this is actually the same day I just filmed it, but the videos will be going up quite a distance apart. The um, paint mule, grab yourself one. Extremely useful tool. There we go. That's the green. We just add a little more down here because you 
it's not looking particularly great. And I'm trying to do this in shot, but um, oh, looked up at the light, bad idea. And if you've been doing anything with the colour of the uh, needle cap off, make sure to screw it back on before you go to clean your airbrush. Because stabbing yourself in the needle in the thumb or the finger, if you go to back flush, that should be all the paint out now. There we go. Because if you go like that to back flush it and you haven't put the needle cap on, you're just going to stab yourself in the thumb. And trust me, that's not a pleasant experience. Especially if you've been spraying a lacquer type paint because then you're putting lacquer thinner directly in. And that really stings. There's also the possibility that you could end up tattooing yourself. Oh, oh. There we go. I've got all my cables and I've got the light cable running across my legs and the uh, airbrush hose is coming up between my legs and they're getting tangled up at the moment so things are getting a little awkward but hey ho, we shall soldier on. And we just finished cleaning this out. UMP thinner. Oh, cleaner, sorry. And in the next section, I will be applying the post fade to the top of the plane so we can build up a tonal bit of bit of a similarity to the underside or the tonal variants just to pick out different panels and areas just to make things darker and lighter make it look less like a die cast toy anyway I hope you like what you've seen I hope I've been at least semi entertaining I'll turn that light off for a blind myself again and Enjoy your modelling as always, have fun, yeah, have fun, peace out, rock on, bye bye.